This episode of Digital Photography Cafe is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your DSLR camera. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe. I'm Trevor Current, your digital marketing guy. And I'm Joseph Christina, your professional photographer. So grab a latte, pull up a chair, and join us as we chat about the art and business of photography. So hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Last week we had a great chat with photographer, speaker, marketing consultant, author, and of course, great friend, Rosh Sillers. We discussed his brand new book entitled The One Hour Photographer. If you haven't listened to last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it on iTunes or listen in your car through Stitcher Radio or simply head over to our website, digitalphotographycafe.com and listen online. So, hey, Joe, we are back. Episode 49. How you doing, man? Good. Good. Hanging in there? I am hanging in there. Episode 49. That's great. Yes. Yes, we are getting there. Looking forward to that one year anniversary. Yeah, we're a couple of weeks away. That's it. Yep. Amazing. Amazing. So um, to kind of kind of just get right into it um, today, kind of scouring the web like we always do, we found an interesting article about Facebook, of course, right? Yep. And they're buying Instagram for $1 billion. It's $1 right? billion. Dollars. Yes, but, right. but in cash and stock, not just right, no cash right. this time. Well, I tell you what, with Facebook or uh, Apple or any of these companies, I'll take their stock all day long. Yeah, but stock's not so, a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Not for Facebook, yeah, that's for yeah. sure. I mean, the stock market sucks right now, but <laughs> eventually, that, that's true. you know what? Buy low, sell high, right? I mean, just, well, there's only a few profitable companies, I think, left out there. And I think Facebook is definitely going to be one of them. So we're, we're, I think they'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think they'll be all right. I, I think yeah. they'll, I, I think that just the cash portion of it alone, I think they'll do just fine. <laughs> yeah. And my understanding is there was like nine guys at Instagram. So, you know, a billion dollars of cash and stock divided by, I don't know, my math isn't too good, but I'm going to yeah, guess it's going to be close a to a hundred and some million dollars a piece. Yeah, um, I think they're all right. Yeah. yeah and not only that, good, Facebook so. brought them in house. So right, now right. they are employed by Facebook. So not only did they get the cash in the stocks, they got jobs too. So. Yeah, no, you can't, you can't beat that. And just a couple of weeks ago, I heard also that they put the platform is now on Android too. So yep. everyone on Android has been just jonesing to have, you know, Instagram, like, you know, us on the iPhone have, and now they have it. So yeah, yeah that's it's, great. It's a great platform. And I think Facebook's really smart. I mean, they they command the market when it comes to pictures. They have more pictures than anybody. anybody. Yep. Um, so now they have Instagram too. So it's like more and more and more. So yep. they, they they got a whole community that followed Instagram too. So I think it's, it was just a smart move. For a billion dollars, that's nothing. It's yeah, I'd sell for a billion. For what do you think? Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so, other Facebook news too. Um, they actually started something uh, pretty cool, and they're offering students um, with you know .edu's for email addresses um, right. twenty five megabytes of storage that they can use for file transfers, basically, right. which is kind of right. cool. Yeah, they're calling it uh, groups for schools. Right. So now, I guess the idea being is that you know a a student could have you know his classmates or whatever, and they and they can use this storage space, this file transfer, to be able to send you know sh show notes, show notes, <laughs> class notes. They could send. Then you know what if they're doing a podcast, absolutely. Or maybe they're doing a TV that. show. Now that everything is becoming you know um, content, content, content driven, <laughs> probably a lot of the a lot of the kids in uh, school today have podcasts of some kind. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Or video casts at that too. Yeah. But you know what was really interesting. When when I was kind of going through it, um, they said no exes, <laughs> yep. no exes. So so I guess uh, you know the window uh, Windows people out there will be happy about that. That you know their their kids are at school and they're not getting viruses through Facebook. So that's that's a plus. Now everyone would say, well, twenty five meg. What the hell am I going to do with twenty five meg? Yeah, that's, that's nothing. nothing. Right. But you know when you're dealing with like PDF files and like small, you know, like maybe an audio file that you captured you know, at a lecture or something like that, and you're sharing it with people in that group, um, I think it's great. I think it's plenty. Sure, and it just it's just a value add, you know, for Facebook to 
what do they want? They want you to stay in Facebook for as many minutes yep. or hours yep. <laughs> per as day as, as possible. That's right. That's yep. it. So anything that they can add into it, um, you know, it, it's, it's just definitely um, important to them. And it's just more data for them. They're, it, they're, they're like a data, data mining you know, monstrosity. Yep. They have more data about you than you probably know about yourself. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. And, you know, and then think about it realistically too. I mean, most email providers limit email attachments to like 10 megabytes. So, you know, okay, great. So you got 25 megs of space you can work with, you know, all of your friends, like all of their friends are on Facebook anyway. So why not utilize the platform to be able to transfer these files? But they did say that they, you know, Facebook will be monitoring um, to, right. to look for those malware things, to look for copyright violation, you know, uh, audio, you know, music, any type of audio file that are copyright. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, they're going to, they're going to put algorithms and stuff like that in place, I'm sure to, to monitor for abuse and right, misuse. Right. So, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, they don't want to turn into another one of these massive file sharing entities, you know, yeah, uh, peer to peer yeah. that, that ends up uh, on the chopping block because of, uh, you know, right. We won't name any of the numerous names, but there's, there's plenty of them. So sure. they're not going to yeah. go down that road. I'm sure. Right. So, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's just another thing, just Facebook doing right. I yeah. Think, you know, yeah. they're, um, and, uh, you know, so I, I guess the, another, another thing that we were kind of going through and, you know, let's just say Google, I don't know. I look at face, Facebook seems to be doing a lot of things right lately. And I see Google as, I don't know, kind of stumbling. There's a lot of like dark air, you know, out there and just people just, you know, I don't think that, um, you know, G plus is doing as well as they really hoped. And, um, you know, it's just, I don't know, but something did leak out of Google, um, recently, I think it was a, a couple of days back and that was regarding their G drive. Right. Right. So uh, I think it's Engadget that had the uh, had the leak or had the had the information, um, and that was kind of interesting. They seem to be you know pulling out the the gun, throwing on the laser target, <laughs> targeting a, a piece and and aiming straight at like Dropbox and and the rest right. of these big players, right? Yeah, yeah, um, these online you know photo tra or file transferring services and stuff, and right, and yeah, I mean, who better to do it than Google? Um, they've, you know, they've got a huge infrastructure, they've got a huge backbone, um, exactly. and it's a great tie in with their Google docs platform that a lot of, you know, individuals and businesses use nowadays. Right. So, and, right. and, and yeah, and, and the details are still kind of sketchy on it. What exactly it is. Is it a standalone service? Is it going to be part of Google docs, you know, integrated into it? Um, it's right. still kind of sketchy information, but it does give the impression of it being a Dropbox competitor or or something like that. So that's it, it you send it or something. You know that that definitely right, is kind right, of right. Uh, kind of interesting. Yeah, and uh, one of the one of the pieces that that leaked was the belief that it's going to be a uh, five gig free account when you sign up. So right. if that's the case, they're definitely taking aim at the two gig that Dropbox offers everyone yeah, with their free account. Yeah. With their free account. So, you know, five gig integration with Google docs, if that's the case, hopefully it is, um, you know, they might even develop a, its own entity and not be just a G drive and not just, um, you know, uh, the, the docs area and blah, you know, they might start, they might make a whole new entity and combine the two because, you know, for forever now, I mean, we do it, we use it all the time, right? For show notes, sure. for video, for yeah. all kinds of stuff. We're, we're using Google and we're, we're dropping stuff in there on a regular basis and it just houses it. That's just it. Yeah. So, um, they've been doing it for a long time and I think now they're going to seek to monetize it like everyone else, right? Google has been really in the monetization game as of late. So, yeah. you know, it's that, uh, you know, that that's their mindset. So we'll, you know, we'll see how that all plays out. I don't know. I just, Wait and see. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this whole, you know, iCloud and all of Apple's offerings there. I mean, everything is, is cloud-based anymore. Everything is going yeah. into the cloud. And, and I think it's, I think it's kind of interesting. I mean, it definitely um, gives you that, that flexibility to do things separate from your office. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, all right, listen. 
Before we go on to our feature segment, let's take a quick break to hear from this week's sponsor. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. So Joe, this really kind of sad and tragic thing happened to in our uh, local community here. Um, the other, like a week and a half ago, um, you know, we, we heard about this, this house that burned down to the ground. That's a shame. Uh, and yeah, it was, it's super tragic. I mean, it was a beautiful home. It was like a, a you know, a colonial contemporary style of home. You know, it was really big um, on a beautiful property out here in the country, you know, cows around and everything else. Right, right, right. And, that sounds uh, familiar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and we drive by it almost all the time. And we drove by the one day and we saw that it was just burned to, I mean, there's nothing left. It's just like wow. a shell of a house. The only thing that's left is like the masonry work on the front of the house. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's really sad. I mean, I, I, we were at an, an event over the weekend and I heard somebody talking and saying that, you know, we were, t they were talking about this house and saying that, um, yeah, that somebody was driving by the house at like three or four o'clock in the morning and saw the house was on fire, you know, wow. saw the garage on fire and they went up and went banging on the door to, to let the family know if they were still in there. And sure enough, they were in there, they were sound asleep because the fire started in the garage garages wow. don't have smoke detectors because the cars would set them off all the time right, right so right. you know it, they didn't even know the fire apparently was burning in the garage for 45 minutes until the fire rated drywall separating the garage from the house finally gave way and then it just engulfed the rest of the house so luckily the family got out you know unharmed but everything is gone everything right. i mean there is nothing left of that house all of their belongings everything was gone and it's just so sad i mean and it, and it hits home for everybody you know because that could happen to anybody anybody that's got a wood stove or a fireplace anybody that's got you know their furnace some crazy thing happens with their furnace or an electrical fire i mean it can happen sure, to sure. anyone no one is protected from something like that right that even happens down here in south florida because you know we never get cold and uh when there is a slight chill in the air everyone's buying these little space heaters right and they are just not familiar on how to use it so they put the space heater in the living room and they have it pointed at you know some drapes or a sofa and all of a sudden boom the whole house goes up right because of these things so that happens a lot down here too no it's really tragic and, and you know what i mean not only from a personal level you know your your family your family's belongings your family's memories but now from a business standpoint i mean many photographers have home-based studios and home-based offices you know they they may rent studio space when necessary but most of what they do may be run out of their home you know from a business standpoint you've got all of your customers images all of your business files probably stored on hard drives in your office in your studio your house sure. burns down and that's all gone so not only did you lose all of your personal possessions, but now you've lost your livelihood, your business files. Yeah, basically your whole business at that point is gone. You you can't you can't get any of that stuff back. Um, I know for me, uh, we do a lot of backing up on a regular basis, and a lot of that has to do with you know possible events like this happening. And I know you are very adamant about um, backing up. Also, I know we use different methods of backing up but uh with this you know with the, the idea the end of the same yeah yeah exactly. yeah i mean we've talked about this before we've talked about backing up your files um internally 
And what I use internally is uh, I have a pair of Drobos. Um, I use right. uh, a Mac Mini as a file server. I have two Drobos connected to that via FireWire. I use one Drobo as my file server, as the file storage where I keep my working files. And then right. I use the other Drobo as the backup. And I use Time Machine as the software that backs up the main files to the other to the other uh, Drobo. Now, nice, nice. The design of the Drobo it, it's it's intended to be redundant backup within its own box. You know right. the way it's designed. It's got this own proprietary software that it runs on, and and each Drobo has redundancy backup. So if one hard drive fails, you pop it out, you pop another one in, you don't lose any data. Right now, back that up to another Drobo. Now you're kind of like a duplicate copy plus the redundancy of the backup. Right, and that's great and all for internal, you know, for in sure. your office, sure. in your studio. But what about that offsite backup? So yeah, you know, at the beginning of the show, we were talking about you know G Drive and Dropbox and a few of these other things. Um, these are great services to utilize to back up your your files to. And right. right now I'm playing with um, a new solution. Um, I'm trying something different. I, I already have an Amazon S3 account. And if, if you people, if everybody's not familiar with Amazon S3, um, Amazon S3 is basically um, data storage in the cloud of Amazon's data centers. Right, which is huge. Which is huge. I mean, they're worldwide. Um, Amazon has an amazing infrastructure they are built for like 99.99999% uptime. Um, the, they are very reliable. Well, I use Amazon S3 to um, run full backups of currentphotographer.com and, and a couple of the other websites that we right. work with. And what I did is I actually found a piece of software that will interface with my Amazon S3 account. It will run locally on the Mac and basically you can tell it what of your files you want backed up. And then it gotcha. will just take those files and over time, you know, you can schedule a time. Like I've got it scheduled for like three o'clock in the morning. I know I'm sleeping. I'm not using any bandwidth in the house. So it just goes on and it just grabs all the files and it copies it over time to Amazon S3. And as the files change, it will just update the files. I, gotcha. I really like the service. I'm just playing with it right now. I'm using, um, it's from, uh, um, who's the company? It's, uh, I think, was that Arc? Was that yeah, it's it's called Arc is the software. It's from Haystack Software. That's right. And uh, yeah, this is a cool Mac only application, but there's lots of applications out there that are similar for sure. PC as well. Um, and, it, and they give you a 30 day free trial. So if you've already have an Amazon S3 account, um, it's probably worth taking the download and trying it out. If you don't have an Amazon S3 account, it's free to sign up. You just pay for your usage and the usage is like dirt cheap. I yeah, mean, they, you can get have... like 16 gigs of storage for like $2 a month or some crazy yeah, it's thing crazy. like that. It's so, absolutely crazy. Yeah, see, I, I tell you what, for me, um, I know you're a Drobo fan and you know me being a network guy forever, um, I have a hard time with yeah. using a Drobo, right? You don't like that proprietary stuff. I, I am just not, I just don't like the proprietary stuff yeah. because it makes me nervous that, you know, the Drobo is writing in its own format. If right. the Drobo dies, there's no way to pull the drives out and do some type of restoration. No. I mean, I suppose you can send them back to them, but let's say, you know, 10 years from now goes by, you know, it's 10 years down the road and you have your Drobos and you have your quadruple back backup on your Drobos and now your RAID array inside dies, your card dies, and yeah. now you have these drives with data on them, but they mean nothing because yeah, they're the not around anymore. Yeah, the Because box the box is, is dead. There's no way to get the data out. So, right. you know, my alternative to that is um, I use, because of course, we're you know in the studio here, everything is Mac, um, but what I use is G-RAID, is what it's called. Okay. And um, they're basically G-Drive, it's from G-Technology, they're by Hitachi. And um, the G-RAID basically has two drives in it, and they're RAID zeros. So they're striped, so they're fast, fast as hell. Yeah. Um, so they go on up to eight terabytes on each. So what that means is you would have, you know, um, you could either get them, let's say, 
two gig, you know, two terabyte and two terabyte, one on top of another, or you can do four and four. The bottom line is, is you can get up to eight terabytes maximum, but they're striped, so they're extremely fast. So for me, working on video or any type of audio or stuff that's really bandwidth intensive, these things are FireWire 800 and they're connected. You can connect them either through USB, you can connect them through um, FireWire 800, or you can connect through um, 400 um, or eSATA. So eSATA is always great too. eSATA is great. Yeah, that's real fast. Yeah, if you're if you're a non Mac guy and you're you know you're in the Windows world, eSATA is the fastest thing that you can get out there. Um, you know, we have Thunderbolt, which would be even faster than that, but still eSATA is great. So for for us right now on ours, we have all iMacs. We use the FireWire 800. So what we have is two sandwiched together. We have a G raid here and a G raid here, and we just go ahead and everything that as the as we let's say we bring in. Um, a, a card right we just shot a sh we just did um, a shoot we take the card then we'll take um we'll create two folders we'll create a folder on the g-raid and then we'll create a folder in the g-raid backup um there it's of course fast as you know all get out and right. we would copy everything from the card to both folders so it would be across four drives at this at this time so you right. both raid zeros um yep. and then after that we would import those and we won't do anything until they're copied onto the both um so we'll, at that point we'll have three backups we'll have it on the card we'll have it on one g raid and we'll have it on the backup g raid and then we'll import into lightroom we'll do all of our corrections we'll do our stars one two three once we get to four or five those are the ones that we're going to pull out and go and edit into photoshop to do some final tweaks and these PSDs, these layered files or TIFFs, um, those are our gold. Those right. are production. Those are the stuff that our clients get. Those are the images that get printed. Um, those are the ones that go to the magazines. That is the gold. Those are the ones that will end up not only on, um, end up on the multiple raid arrays, but they'll be on a secondary backup. It's, I guess you would call it a tertiary backup that is just a USB plugged in monstrosity of a backup um, drive. We'll just throw everything on those. Those are final. And then we'll take those finals and shoot them up to the cloud. Right. So we have them here on location in three locations and three backup locations. And then we have them on the, in the cloud too, in case of, like you said, God forbid there was that fire. Whereas yeah. all of your local backups, all of your local computers, local, everything is gone your business isn't gone. You still have all of your records. You have all of your documents, your contact information. You have all of your contracts. You have all of your final quote unquote production work is in the cloud. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's the way I do it. It's a little bit different, but at the end of the day, we, we both end up with a pretty decent backup strategy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the hardware, even the software can be replaced. You know, you, right. that's what that's what insurance is for. But those files can never be replaced. And, you know, your business files, you know, that's one thing you lose. You lose invoices, you lose proposals, things like that. Ah, OK, not good. Sure. You can survive that. But when you if you're a wedding photographer, for example, and you've got hundreds of weddings, you know, in these drives in your studio and they're gone, whether it be fire or whether it be theft. Sure. Those memories are gone. You can never reshoot that wedding again, you know, and, and that exactly. is just, I mean, it's horrible. It's a horrible thing. If that, if that couple ever came back to you and wanted reprints or whatever, you'd have to tell them, I'm sorry, I don't have them anymore. We had a, you know, catastrophe, yeah, catastrophic, you know, yeah. we, the house burned down, the, the, you know, we were whatever. broken into, things were stolen. And that really, exactly. I mean, as horrible as it is from a business standpoint, that's no excuse. No, I mean, you need no. to have that offsite backup. And whether you're using the cloud or whether you're using a, a G-RAID um, drive and you take it and, you know, you burn a duplicate to it and you take it to a, a friend's house or something like that, you know? Yeah, you just have to get it offsite. You got to get it offsite. That's the key. That's the key. Yeah, I know. We, we actually, um, when we talk to, to models and we do portfolios or if we're working on an ad campaign or whatever, um, all the agencies, anyone that we work with, they know that everything that we have is there forever. Right. Um, you know, we've we've pulled stuff from '93 um, because we have stuff that far back. So That's it's good. it's important that they know that not only can you do the job, but you're reliable. 
um, if they need something down the road, you know, they should be able to just say, hey, you know, do you remember three years ago there was this big, you know, event? You know, there was this specific picture with so and so and so and so. Can we get that? Right. It might take you know a week or so because the, we'll have to go and to find it, it up. and then yeah. yeah, and we'll have to pull it out of backup and you know spin up uh, you know drives or go <laughs> and look online for them. But one way or another, we have them. Right. So um, and and what's what's good too is if you're a studio owner and this type type of thing happens and it does happen, um, you can actually charge an archiving um, fee. Sure. Um, where you're actually yep. pulling stuff out of the archive after X amount of time. And that's what we do. And even with our brides, we, we will say, and we don't do a lot of brides, but even with the brides, we'll say, okay, well, we're going to have this available for you for, let's say, six months. Well, after that, you're going to be charged a fee for us to go and bring it back into live um, content because we just, there's just too much. We cannot keep everything live. We are, you know, the tables would be packed um, right. with, uh, with these, you know, the two, four terabyte drives just, you know, stacked up. I can't even tell you how many we have. Right, um, right. but, uh, there's no way to have these things live. So we do charge a fee for that. So that could be something that, you know, you can offset that cost by, by doing something like that. So sure. it, that's a possibility too. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. And you know what? <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure a lot of our wedding photographers out there, they know brides and the couples are notorious for dragging their feet and choosing their images and, and selecting the final album designs and stuff like that. And you it it's hard to keep those open jobs available on your, you know, active servers and stuff. Yeah, and and I agree, do it. eventually you reach a point where you got to throw it into the archives and then charge them a fee to resurrect it and, and get the things printed, you know? Yeah. Some, some of the, I mean, we've done some really big weddings, you know, two, three day weddings where we're, you know, we're collecting and a multimedia um, type of um, wedding where we're collecting video and stills and audio. And the time we're done, you know, we're at about let's say 170, 200, 230, right around there gigabytes yeah, that's a um, lot. of data. So you have a quarter of a terabyte already just gone on just one event. I mean, you obviously, you know, and we have numerous, so, you know, you, there's, there'd be no way to keep this stuff live for, no, you, can't. you know, um, more than an allotment that you give them and that's it. Right. Um, so anyways, you know, I guess kind of, uh, to kind of conclude a little bit, the bottom line is there's there's a lot of free things that you can go and get a lot of like Dropbox. I mean, Dropbox gives you two gigs right out the get go. You just sign up, it you know you put in your email address and off you go, and they give you two gigs. Well, you know if you're doing small files or you're shooting JPEGs or you're just uploading your documents or you're putting in there your contracts or your contact information or your mailing list or you know any of these type of files. Upload them into the cloud. Send them sure. over to Dropbox. Um, you know, we're we're very. Um, I, I would say they're probably one of the better ones out there. Um, I use them all the time. I love them. I think we need to put like a little Dropbox, um, um, a little uh, clickable link in the show notes, so they can go in there and sign up. And uh, maybe we'll put it into the show. Maybe we can get a couple of extra gigs. If uh, people go and take a look, it wouldn't be, it would be good for the show and it'll be good for you guys to be able to um, get the Dropbox for free too. So. Yeah, that's right. Dropbox offers this, uh, this great promotion. So they give right. you two gigs of storage for free, but if you get your friends and, you know, other acquaintances, business partners, whatever to sign up, they'll get the two gigs, but then you get a bump in your storage as well. Exactly. So, so yeah, I mean, we, we would love um, for you guys to, to click on the links and sign up. Um, that yeah. would help boost our, our Dropbox. And, you know, then sure. you can put it out to your communities to, to do the yeah. same. And it's free and it's, free. it's good it's and it's secure. And um, I mean, Dropbox is the, the player right now to beat. So yeah. um, I would, I would say wholeheartedly, that's a great place to go, especially if you, you don't need anything more than two gigs. And even if you do, I mean, I think it's, you know, their, their plans go up to like $10 and $20. I mean, it's really reasonable. Yeah. It's not that expensive. No. So, all right, man, I think it's time that we get out of here. What do you think? I think so. I think so. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody for joining us and, as always, if you have any uh, questions, comments, things you'd like discussed on the show, 
you know, shoot us a message through digitalphotographycafe.com or send us a, a DM or a reply on Twitter at the Photo Cafe. And if you enjoy the show, please, we encourage you to subscribe for it in iTunes. Or you can get it via RSS and have it sent to your computer automatically. So, Joe, if people want to learn more about what you're doing, how can they connect with you? So, I try. They can find me on the website at AllureMM.com. On Twitter, that's at Joseph Pristina. That's Pristina without an H. On Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash AllureMM and Google+. Plus. You can go to G+. JC.com. Great. And you can keep up with me on Twitter at Trevor Current and get even more photography goodness at our new account at Current Photo. And of course, check out our website at currentphotographer.com and facebook.com forward slash current photographer. So, all right, Trev, we are out of here. Awesome show, as always. I'd like to thank the listeners for their continued support. If you enjoy the show, why not buy your caffeine-addicted host a cup of coffee? We've added a tip jar to our website, so please consider making a donation. If you're listening on the go, fear not. Everything that we covered during this week's show can easily be found in our show notes at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com. Once again, keep your questions and comments coming, and we'll talk to you next week.